So we're back in the garage and the plan today is to bench the RX6800 with the i9 10900K engineering sample. Uh, we're on the MSI Z490E Unify. Got the blue fan again on the RAM. The fan, by the way, isn't RGB, it's just an uh, LED fan. You can see the CPU temperature there. And we have got it hooked up to the giant radiator of death. So, I'm also running a new Windows. This is Spectre, some or other Windows. So it's a different version. And uh, I need a piece of paper to put the mouse on because it doesn't work on this desk. So I'll go do that. Right, now I can actually move the mouse around on the screen. I'll just show you where we're at. So, we're at 5.1 on the GPU, and we're at 4800 on the cache, or is it 4600, can't remember, we're at 4200 on the memory, 16, 16, 16, 32, and obviously we're at 2T, and see if I can beat the 5900X with the 10900K on Fire Strike, because on Fire Strike, there's basically a problem with the with the 5900X where the combined scores messed up. So I want to see if the, that is the same with the 10900K as well. So let's see what it can do in Fire Strike first. Uh, I'm just going to leave the GPU at stock for now, just to check the CPU is stable in Fire Strike. You can see when it's running system info, not even start the benchmark, it's getting up to 70 degrees there. This uh, system info is a bit special. For some reason, it like destroys the CPU with AVX before it even starts the test, which is really annoying because it crashes most of the time on AMD. So I've just got the score we're trying to beat up on my phone here. 39,972 Graphics score is 53,800 Physics score 38,000 We won't beat that But I'm hoping the combined score Which was 13,900 Is higher On the 10900K So We'll see anyway I'm not 100% confident it will beat it But we'll see And that was with the CPU At 4.8 uh, we're about 6,000 points off the pace. Obviously the GPU is at stock at the minute. So there's the comparison um, in score. You can see the other CPU is a lot faster, but remember this is only uh, not at full speed yet. So we'll see what it, what it goes to once it's overclocked. I'm not going to validate the score because I haven't got any internet down here at the minute. We've done the overclocked run now, you can see we've made up quite a bit of the uh, points there. Uh, the GPU score is almost the same as my high score, but the physics are combined, there's still no match for the 5900X. Let's just have a look here, so 99.16 and the combined is 47.7. So that's still quite a bit lower. The 5900X averages around 110 FPS, uh, maybe a bit more. Right, this is the third run, and we have a problem with the combined score, same as with the 5900X. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the BIOS and try make the CPU. So it's 10 cores, but 16 threads. Now we're running 10 cores but 16 threads rather than 10 cores 20 threads. And you can see the combined score is 11,000. Uh, the physics score's obviously gone down, but the combined score should be more consistent now in theory. I mean, in practice, we'll see. Gonna run it again, see what we can get. So let's go up to a minimum clock here of 2450 
and we're going to increase the max frequency to 2560. I'm also going to increase the memory clock to 2150 on the fast timing, see if that makes any difference. That's it, you can see there it's got a lower combined score again. So it definitely isn't the thread count, it is just 3D Mark being terrible. Also got a lower graphic score this time as well. So you can see we're on 10 cores, 16 threads. Back in Windows now with all cores and threads enabled. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run Time Spy and Time Spy Extreme. Uh, just to show you what the CPU gets and then compare that to the 3900X and also the 5950X both underwater so you can see what kind of scores you get in 3D Mark times by compared to those just run the CPU test because there's no point running the graphics test uh, but you got 15,900 in time spy uh, obviously I've just run the CPU test so that's not too bad for 5.1 it's only about a thousand points behind the uh, 5900X here which was at 4.8 if I scroll across you can see there that was at 4.8 or 4.825 times spy extreme we've got 7153 um, and the 5900X managed to get just over 9,000 so the 5900X is quite a bit better in this case and again the 5900X is at 4.825 whereas this is at 5.1 I did notice as well it's only getting to like 60 degrees in these tests uh, it's getting to like 75 uh, just loading the stupid system info so I might try and go to 5.2 so let's see if we can do that so open the MSI dragon power thing here uh, CPU core voltage I'm just gonna go for 1.45 volts which is obviously a lot more than I'm at currently there we go and we're going to try 52 on the multiplier it'll probably crash not yet though so we are at 5.2 now at 1.45 volts let's just try normal time spy first see it running the actual benchmark it's not getting nowhere near as hot so it hit 82 as you saw there and then running the benchmark it only hit like 70 so 16,100 so it's not made too much of a difference it's not going to get to nearly 17,000 like the 5900X which has two more cores to be fair two times by extreme that is a bit heavier and again watch the temperature this is while loading system info 81 81 again but it has managed to get into the benchmark so loading system info is way more of a harder benchmark than the time spy extreme physics test which is ridiculous yeah there we go 7200 77 what was it 5.2 try 5.3 might as well probably not going to work though to be honest go up to 1.5 volts there we go don't even know if this is going to work to be honest not not really tried it, anything above 5.1 really probably going to crash it's loading up system info it's 
getting to 83 degrees now, so it's not actually that much hotter to be fair. Ah, it's crashed. Yeah, there we go. So that's it. That's it for that. In the last video I kind of failed to show the performance, so here I've got a another OS, this one specifically uh, installed on this board for Z490 for 2D benching, although I've got GPU-Z on here anyway. Uh, we swapped the 6800 out for the GT710, so yeah, maximum speed for the GPU there. I'm just going to show you what you can do at 5.1 in our 21st there we go 6,689 gonna close everything unnecessary there we go, broke 6,700 so let's get back in so in fact, I'll just um, run R15 as well for you, and 11.5, just show you the performance. 2805, 30.35 in 11.5. Uh, just over a hundred thousand, about a hundred and five thousand in seven zip. Then about two point one six eight seconds in W prime thirty two M. 2.151 now, there we go. So we'll try 5.2 and see what happens. Now we're at 5.2, 1.45 volts. Let's see if it can actually run all the way through. I'll show you the temperature. And it's crashed. So we can't run Cinebench R20 at 5.2. I'm going to try again just once more uh, without it on high priority. A bit more voltage. See what happens. It's at 86 degrees and pretty much crashed straight away I think. Try again. This time we're going to try R15. made it a bit further through and it looks like it's just closed it rather than crashed. Let's try 11.5 84 85, oh there we go it's crashed again gonna give 7 zip a go 5.2 Ah, there we go, 107, so it's a little bit higher. Try W Prime as well, W Prime should work okay, I would have thought. Yeah, we got 2.15 last time, we're getting 2.09 this time, so it's a bit quicker. Try 5.3, 1.5 volts. There we go. Let's see if it'll do 7 zip and W prime at that.
No, I think it's crashed. Now else is frozen. Temperature's staying pretty cool. So I might need restarting. Trying to get it to run the CPU's Z benchmark at 5.3, up to 1.53 volts now. And it's still on the multi-thread benchmark. It was crashing last time. But it's only getting to 81, 82. So you can see it struggles a bit now. Gonna make it, oh I made it that time. That's good. Nice, there we go, 641 on the single thread as well. It's pretty impressive. 8,000. Let's compare it to. Uh, yeah, it's nothing, there's no 3800X on here unfortunately. 10850K is really the closest thing. So yeah. It's uh, actually quite stable on that, that's pretty good. 641 singles pretty high as well. Uh, I'll actually try R20 single at 5.3, see what it gets, and then can compare that to what uh, AMD get. So we'll just go on advanced benchmark here, and then run that. There we go, 5.3, and it's only scored 555. So that's less than like a stock 5600 or 5900X by quite a lot. So let's move on to R15 next and see what it can get that in the single thread test. R15 235, pretty respectable. Let's go on to 11.5 next for the single thread. In 11.5 single thread we've got 2.61 at 5.3 Gonna try a bonus round, we'll go 5.4, see if that works, but I doubt it now I might as well put the cash up to 48 as well, why not We'll go for R15 It's not even going to go at all now. Let's try one more time. There we go, it's actually started. Whether it will finish or not is a entirely different matter. 5.4 gigahertz, 1.53 volts, 240 that time. That's quite a decent improvement to be honest. Uh, but that's going to wrap this video up, uh, you've seen the actual performance of it now in both multi-threaded, single-threaded and the uh, 3D mark tests as well. So it's clearly not as fast as the new AMD chips but for 300 quid. Uh, obviously the 5800X which is kind of the competitor to this CPU at the minute in terms of price is still about 150 quid more if you actually can find one so until the 5700X comes out uh, this isn't actually too bad of a buy and also if you're coming from like an i5 10600K uh, which is 6 core 12 thread getting an engineering sample uh, 10 core 20 thread isn't actually a bad idea because it will cost you less than a 10850 or a 10900K just whether you can be bothered to wait for it to come from China, I guess. Uh, this is 300 quid, so yeah, you could probably upgrade a 10600K, sell that for, I don't know, 180, maybe 200 quid if you're lucky. Then upgrade to this, and it won't be too bad. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this one. Goodbye.